Before anybody asks in the comments, I'll go ahead and address it right away. Why did I choose a Pontiac Fiero as my project car? Well, I wanted to. That is a very simplified answer, I know. It's not deep or insightful in the slightest bit, but what it is, is truthfully the only answer that matters. Now if that leaves a lot to be desired, don't worry, there is a long version of that answer. A long version I gave back at the beginning of this series. If you are so inclined to hear it, I recommend going back to episode 1 where all those reasons are laid out in a nice little bow, but in reality, asking why isn't really the best question to ask. At least not now with us here at the end of the project. The better question is one that's a little more reflective. Now at first, the idea of reflection felt a little weird. This is the end of something, sure, but has enough time passed for me to really be able to do that? Well, I bought the car at the end of March in 2018, and here we are now at the beginning of May in 2021. Three years of my life have been working on this car and sharing these videos with you guys. Well, actually, it wasn't until eight months after I got the car that I started releasing videos on the work I've done, and it wasn't until three months after that that the algorithm decided to push the series. So I guess for 99% of you, it's only been two years, not three, but even so, that's still a considerable amount of time. It feels like just yesterday I was driving up to North Houston with my dad and Elise, seeing this car for the very first time and ultimately setting the start point for this entire journey. I think saying the car has come a long way would be a bit of an understatement. All that's left now is just the last tiny bits of reassembly. As great as it is to be at the finish line, it's absolutely not the best part of the project. Don't get me wrong, starting with something that was left for dead and ending up with what is essentially a brand new car has been the entire goal, but it hasn't been the point. It isn't the reason for doing it. The end product of hitting those milestones isn't what's worthwhile, it's the moments when you hit them. I'll never forget how it felt dropping off the car. How it felt hearing the engine show its first signs of life. How it felt driving it for the first time after being off the road for over 20 years. And I think above all, how I felt bolting the drivetrain back in the car after the engine refurbish will stick with me the most. I cried. As many highs as there were, there were also a lot of lows. And no, I'm not talking about busting knuckles, dropping a freshly painted part, or even sending a screwdriver through the brand new headliner. No, I'm talking about burnout. Those days, or weeks even, where the weight of the project is really bearing down, and you get so damned overwhelmed you just have no motivation to do anything at all. Well, at least not anything more on the project that's getting to you. In times like that, you might pick up another toy for yourself to mess around with. Or two. Or three. Or four. Or maybe help out your buddy on their vintage basket case. Or possibly even slap twin turbos onto your brother's daily driver. <sighs> you get the point. I did a lot of worrying. I did a lot of self-distraction. If I hadn't gone and filmed multiple episodes of multiple future project series, the Fiero probably would have been done over a year ago. It's really easy to push things off. 
What's not so easy is getting back to the grindstone when the task ahead of you feels like an impossible one. But when you do, more often than not, you fall in love with the project all over again. You remember why you started in the first place, and you end up doing more than you originally planned to because you're just so in it. You get lost in the craft. And before you know it, the only thing left to do is put on a few stickers. Back when this thing started, the series, I said that the whole point of documenting my work was basically to say, if I can do it, so can you. It was to show what a novice is capable of. Well, this novice fucking did it. Too bad, huh? I think it looks pretty damn good. I know it's a little vain to be like, hey, look at me and look what I did, but that's kind of the nature of a finale episode, at least in a project series. So I'm gonna toot my horn a little bit. Holy crap, guys. This thing was an absolute basket case and having gone through pretty much every single component on the car. It's pretty much brand new. Oh, for uh, those asking about how much the build has cost, it's uh, about $8,000 is the total right now. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Mechanically, this car is brand new and 100% perfect. The only thing that isn't 100% Mwah. Chef's kiss is uh, the cosmetics. It's true. There's still things like cracks in the dash, warpage on some interior panels even after I tried fixing them, and the far from perfect paint job. The paint is definitely what's the worst. I got runs in a few spots, and with that, some solvent pop that goes down to the base coat, so unfortunately, wet sanding and polishing the clear coat isn't going to fix that by any means. And also, there's something you may have noticed in these last shots. When installing the hood, there was a point where I didn't have it adjusted properly and the passenger side axis of rotation was a little bit too low. So much so to the point where when I opened it up at that point, the front edge ran right into one of the bolts for the front bumper. And because this is sheet molding compound, a form of fiberglass and not metal, it just took a huge chunk right out of the edge. A little bit of touch-up paint 
took care of it a little bit. I'm not upset with it anymore. I'm past that, but what a freaking slap in the face. It was the last panel. It was the last part to go on the car. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes on this car, more so on the paintwork than anything else, but do you know what making mistakes means? It means that you tried. And I think that trying is a lot more admirable than never even taking the chance at all. Not that there's anything wrong with outsourcing bodywork and paint, or any work that you don't feel comfortable doing for that matter, because there's not. I'm just trying to say that even though my paint job isn't perfect, I'm still very proud of the work that I did. The less than stellar cosmetics doesn't make the car any less fun to drive, but above all, it doesn't negate the work that I did do right. I did this. I restored an entire car in my backyard. And I know in the automotive bubble, doing that isn't something spectacular or out of the ordinary, but compared to the 7 billion people on this planet, it's absolutely uncommon and I think is very much a feat for one person to do alone. Well, 99% of the work was me alone, but I absolutely had help along the way. I outsourced removing a stuck piston from one of the brake calipers, welding the aluminum clutch pedal, decking the cylinder head, surfacing the flywheel, the little bit of frame pulling that was done to the car, and lastly the windshield replacement. But it's not even the outsourced work that made this not a solitary venture. I had friends and family helping me out from the very beginning. Besides helping me pick up the car, my dad moved some tires around, rebuilt the brakes with me and helped me slap on that hood at the very end. My mom helped me with some body panels too. My sister was there for moral support when I got the car going for the first time after the engine refresh, but she helped out with some stuff off camera too. And my brother was there for pretty much everything during that first summer I worked on it. And aside from my incredible family, I also have some pretty incredible friends. Roman, who bought the freaking car lift and installed it in my barn. I mean, it was for his Volkswagen, sure. But he let me use it. My best friend, Jake. Well, actually, Jake didn't do anything. But my buddy, Jordan, helped me drop the engine out of the car. Uh, Chris and Charles helped me scrub some interior panels. Caleb helped me film one little clip from the first episode, and my buddy Sean uh, helped me out with those drone shots. But above all, I owe the biggest gratitude to the love of my life, Elise. She has helped me out more than anyone, and I absolutely would not have done this without her. And that is a fact. And there's also Austin, Ada, Tim, Lawrence, Josh, Gabe, Pat, Tony, Justice, and the entire Gutierrez family who believed in me before anyone else did. So yeah, I definitely wasn't alone on this project now that I've said all of this out loud. Not to mention all of the friends that I've made along the way. There's John, who was nice enough to send me a set of factory reproduction stickers that he makes. I gotta say, they really made the car just have that, I guess, icing on the cake. It was a very nice finishing touch. And also Jason, who was the uh, saving grace for the whole gas tank fiasco. Corey had a stockpile of Fieros and let me raid them for uh, this bumper and a few other parts. And Alex and Rose from Lightspeed Fieros got me this decal that they made themselves, as well as sourced me some crack-free lenses for the car. And also, I can't forget Mr. Mike for uh, giving me this absolutely incredible uh, reupholstery kit for the seats. But those are just the people that directly contributed to this car. I have met so many people in the Fiero community that have helped me out. And I've also met so many people in just the automotive community and the YouTube community. And also, gotta thank Eastwood too. They, uh, liked what I did enough to help me out with like the sand blaster, the powder coating stuff, and the paint as well. 
Huge thanks to them. Huge thanks to everyone that has helped me out and has been here for this project. And I really do mean everyone. Because I would be remiss if I didn't mention all of you guys. I absolutely would not have done all that I have without you watching. Let me tell you, the realization that you have a quarter of a million people waiting on you is a pretty big motivator to get to work. But it's not even that. Uh, speaking fully transparently, the revenue from these videos has helped pay for a lot of the parts for this build. So for everyone that's turned off your ad blocker, watched a video all the way through, or bought one of my shirts or stickers, and especially to those people that are generous enough to support me on Patreon. It is quite literally because of all you that I've been able to do this project. Or better said, that I've been able to do this project right. I've said it before in many videos, but this was only supposed to be a 10-part series, and maybe a year out of my life. I was gonna do with a minimal amount of work to get this thing safe and road ready and presentable. But I am very glad and very thankful that this project was able to evolve into a lot more than just that. So thank you. Thank you so much. And outside of monetary reasons too, of course, the overwhelming support has been incredible and encouraging, to say the least. So yeah, that is everyone that I have to thank, thanked. Besides two people, this whole endeavor, this exact car that I restored, would not be possible if it weren't for Bruce and Suzanne, the original owners of the car. Hello! You're such a good stander! Hi, buddy! You're the star of the show! Oh my gosh! Hello! Hello. Oh, I heard a piano How's it going? Hello! How's it going? Good, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. Hi! Good, good. Hey, this, how are you? Remember me? Yeah, of course! Good, good. This Bella, stop! Again. Bella! Head no, Bella, belly. no, Bella, no. She's awfully uh, needy. Okay, well, let me get Sorry. Oh, so good. So you got the windshield replaced too. Oh yeah. And feel free to open the doors and look inside. Oh, okay. I, I was gonna say, yeah, let's pop the trunk. Let's just check it all out. How did you get oh, another one of these? Goodness. Um, yeah, and that's where you got the yeah. white front. Uh huh. So I got the wing from there too. <laughs> it looks brand oh, new. Oh my yeah. goodness. And the trunk is still messy. Uh, I haven't cleaned that out yet, but... No, but that law looks brand new. I know. I I don't even remember it ever looking that black, except maybe yeah. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm amazed. I'm just I mean, amazed at how good... Yeah. Every, and the, the, the yeah. lenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just so hard to believe that you got this whole thing going. I, I know. From being a rat's nest. The best thing was, is one time there was a, a ballpark thing. Mm -hmm. And these are these kids are probably about twelve or thirteen, so they were at the wrong ballpark, and so we must have loaded into this vehicle. Of course, my seat would have been up. Probably five kids. Wow. I mean, and, and, and of course that would have been illegal, but you know what I mean. But we got them to the right ballpark. Mm -hmm. I, it was just, you know, this. There was a lot done with this car. Well, you, you've, you've really done a great job. Very impressed. Thank you, guys. And like I said, I really oh, yeah. enjoyed. I really enjoyed watching the videos. I, I mean, I watched some of them two and three times. <laughs> you know, I just it was just amazing to me. Bruce, but, uh, Bruce is what. Okay, this is what I do. I watch the really like when it's going, when it's looking good. I mean, some of the things I'll watch like, but then other things it's very tedious. I mean, oh, you're yeah. very detailed. Now Bruce loves all that. Mm -hmm. He'll just yeah, watch. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Oh, so is this one of our original keys? Yeah, that was um, the key that I locked in the trunk when I had to drill it out. 
Uh, and so I just left it in there because like the lock was broken, so it didn't matter anymore. Yeah, Suzanne, can I take a picture of you in front of it? Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna have these things all on? Well, let's take one with them with it open and one with it closed. <laughs> Driving up to see them was absolutely worth it. Besides just getting reactions, I also got a little warning sticker about the engine fires the Fieros are known for, as well as the security lug nut key that I wish I had back when filming the first episode. But the joy of getting reactions in those little trinkets isn't even a fraction of what made the trip worthwhile. I'm so grateful that not only I could show them the result of everything I've done, but that they were excited for me to. I knew coming back to where it all started would be great closure for the series, a full circle ending kind of thing. I knew it'd be fun, but honestly, I didn't expect for it to be so lovely. Elise and I stayed there for six hours talking with them and just having an absolutely wonderful time. Before we knew it, it got dark and it was time to head back home. We didn't say our goodbyes though, we said our see you laters. For a lot of people, Cars are just means of transportation, and of no sentiment, which is absolutely fine, but it was so heartwarming to learn that that wasn't the case for them, especially with this project being something that I've poured my soul into. Cars can be a beautiful way of connecting, and this car was very much a part of their life, just as it is a part of mine now. It's gone through a lot of chapters in its life, from daily driver, to Forgotten Mess, and as of recently, Project Car. But that chapter's coming to an end, too. I gotta say that there's a common expression in the automotive community that Project Cars are never really finished. But I really don't agree with that. The entire goal of this project was to restore a car. And I did. So, as far as I'm concerned, the project is over. And yeah, there is definitely going to be things that I'll do to the car in the future. For starters, the general maintenance to keep up with. And something probably is going to fail and I'll have to fix it. But who knows, maybe I'll do some uh, actual modifications and upgrades to it. But that doesn't mean that the car itself is a project just whatever the task at hand is. So because of that, the chapter of Project Car is over. And I think that the next chapter is also going to be titled Daily Driver. I mean, granted, I work in my backyard and drive a car maybe, maybe three times a week. But uh, still, Daily Driver. You want to hear a cold start? This car is gonna be loved, but you better believe it's also gonna be driven. It is not a trophy to be kept inside. It's gonna get left out in the rain. I'm gonna get groceries in this thing and probably spill something. Hell, one day I'm gonna even take it all the way across America. I already took it from Houston to Austin and back. This car is going to be around for the rest of my life, and I wanna give it what it deserves, and that is to actually be used. And. I think I want to do that all without cameras. I now have told the story that I wanted to tell with this car. And I think I want to put down the cameras, stop filming everything I do to it, and just enjoy it as a car and not necessarily a storytelling device. 
Though I gotta say, one of the best things about sharing my story with this is hearing your stories. I've gotten comments ranging from people who were in high school and maybe their aunt had this car and they remember riding in it, all the way to people whose parents worked on the assembly line for the car. It's incredible. And it's not just limited to Fieros. I've gotten comments from people telling me about the car that left a special place in their heart and how they've gone through similar things that I have. It, it, it really is incredible. I started filming everything because I had a story to share and I never anticipated hearing so many stories in return. And it's kind of actually the perfect segue to that question I asked at the beginning of the video. You know, the one I wanted to uh, address right away? So, the better question than why did I choose a Pontiac Fiero as my project car is, was it worth it choosing a Pontiac Fiero? Absolutely. Absolutely. I captioned one of my recent Instagram posts. Uh, it was a picture of the car in my driveway with the front body panels ready to go on. The beginning of the end. And Andrew Howell corrected me. This is, in actuality, the end of the beginning. The Fiera project is over but there's still a, a lot more to come from me. With all the projects that I teased earlier, and believe me, that wasn't even all of them, not to mention the future ones beyond those, I'm just getting started. I really am gonna miss working on the car though, and documenting the whole process. You know what? You know what? Um, there's actually something I was gonna take care of that needs to be fixed on the car. I was just gonna not mention it and do it after this series was over. But how about for old time's sake, take you with me on one more fix accompanied with synth music and narration. One last time. Literally one mile down the road after leaving for that Austin road trip I mentioned earlier, the odometer stopped working. Just the main one though. I reset the still working trip odometer as soon as I noticed and decided to worry about the problem later. Well, now it's later. If you look at the footage from right now, compared to the footage from a few days ago when I was filming at the park, you can see that the main odometer readings are the same for both. 105,450, or just about. The trip odometer is updating as it should, like I said. Because of that, and because the speedometer still works, we know for a fact that the instrument cluster is getting the data from the vehicle speed sensor just fine. And also, the odometer just stopped working all of the sudden, and remained stopped. It's pretty common for teeth on the gears of the mechanism to fail, just because they're often cheap plastic, but when that happens you normally hear a very audible click over and over, or at least you see the numbers trying to move but never actually being able to do so. Mine is just frozen solid, so I'm thinking that it's just the motor that failed, not the gears. So after unbolting all of the bolts and unplugging all of the plugs, the cluster was popped out and brought into the barn. Now it's just a matter of taking out all of these bolts as well so we can get to the circuit board for the speedometer and the odometers. And yep, my suspicion was confirmed. The gears look to be perfectly intact, so it probably is just the motor. With everything undone, the board can just slide right out and we can get a better look at this thing. We can see both motors for the different odometers on the back here. Because they're connected together on the circuit board, running in parallel, they're going to move at the exact same speed. Which 
makes perfect sense. But because of that, a common and quick fix for this is just to swap the two motors. That way, you can at least have the main one working so you can pass inspection, but I'm not gonna do that. I already bought a replacement motor online that I'm gonna put in here. It is the exact same part number for the Fiero motor, but because it was marketed as a replacement for a Corvette, it'll probably make my car a little bit faster. With the motor now off the board, the odometer is free to spin. This guy has a ratcheting mechanism in it, so the tenths of a mile wheel can spin back and forth until it rolls over. Pretty neat. Now, doing that did just add an extra mile to the clock, but I actually should add the miles from the trip odometer to the main one in order for it to be accurate. But it's going to take a long time to move this counter 427 miles by hand, so I'm just not going to do that. Nice! That worked very well. Now to do the reverse of all that disassembly, but this time with the replacement motor. <laughs> Fuck, which one is which? This is probably the one I took off. I will not just removed, okay. Alright, sweet. This thing looks good. Well, about as good as a boxy 80s instrument cluster can, but okay! Time to plug and bolt this thing back in. God. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's the last thing I'm ever gonna do to the Fiero in the series, at least. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for following along with me, supporting me. It really does mean the world. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let's go for a test drive and see if this odometer actually works now. So, 
after 1.8 miles of test driving, I guess that's going to wrap up this repair and the series. That's it. That is the project done. This has been a wonderful learning experience and a hell of a journey. Thank you so much for being part of it. And I'm also going to say thank you in advance for sticking around for all those future projects I teased earlier in the video. But, um, okay. So, until next time, I'll see you guys later.